Good day, folks. Here's something I've been working on. I've been experimenting with these uh, rare earth magnet rods here. I've got a bunch of these rods right over here. And these are very strong. I could uh, lift my 25 pound weights with these magnetic rods to give you an idea. So I had this idea to wrap a coil around the magnetic rod. So what I want to do is I want to interact with the EH fields. So what happens basically here is um, when you pulse the magnet, it, it modulates the H field. And the modulated H fields interact with the capacitor. The placement matters. Uh, the capacitor's uh, E fields because they are essentially static. So we're modulating those fields and we're interacting with an EH field. And this fits into Tom Bergen's specifications of bringing in asymmetrical systems. So we're having a novel EH interactions that usually in systems like motors and whatnot is perfectly symmetrical and transformers and whatnot. This is a highly non-symmetrical system with the interactions. So the whole idea I'm trying to do here is while I'm pulsing the inductive kickback with the rectifying diode here, that the fields would um, also help through the, uh, what happens here is when we modulate these um, fields, we end up with a very strong, um, I've talked about this before, pointing vector field. And it's expressed in watts per meter. So by using the static magnetic field and modulating it, uh, against a very strong electric field, if you do the calculations, you end up with a massive amounts of watts per meter square. So this introduces a very strong pointing vector field that can interact and help charge the capacitors here. So here's, so that's the reason. This is my input capacitor, and it's not to do anything more but to be a big capacitor to have a strong electric field to interact with the magnet right here. And this is the bigger, well, bigger value, not bigger um, capacity, which would dump, which I'm not there yet, but it's going to dump. And what I eventually want to do is take this coil here on the back and use, put it on the bottom here, and there'll be like a feedback that goes back to the base to help it. But for now, I've noticed that these interactions really, really enhance the system. So when I turn this on here, I get about anywhere from 24 to 34 volts with the little 12 volt power supply here, which is not bad for this coil here. And the magnet really, really hums, okay? And I'm gonna show you this right now. I'm gonna plug it in. Ugh. Sorry about that. So we're gonna plug it in and the scope is connected to it here. And now that we're going to see about 43 to 36 volts there. And this is just measuring the, I'm not dumping it to anything at this point here. But I started, this is a big revelations, okay? I want to show you folks a big, big revelation here. And these systems, and I've talked about it before, especially um, for the uh, one wire, that when you add a ground, it does a big difference, okay? And at this point, this isn't anything unusual, but because of the placement of the magnets and the interaction of the fields, what happens is it really enhances the effect. So I'm gonna show you what happened here. So I'm gonna tap the positive with my hand, which my body will simulate an artificial ground, okay? And look what happens in the scope when I do that. I get peaks of over 100 volts, but it's only a peak, you see? If I keep holding it, nothing different happens. I have to re release it, then tap it really sharply over and over again. Then I can simulate that spike again. So I don't know if you're following me, but what's going on here is this is enhancing and introducing a sudden displacement current because we're interrupting the, the state of potential with my artificial ground. And because there's a displacement current, a strong displacement current between the EH interactions here it introduces that very very strong spike that gets superimposed with the normal inductive kickbacks so in other words it's a bonus system that comes in of energy now all one has to do at this point is build a switch and this is the big revelation folks 
It's not enough to just put it ground and put it there and call it a day. What you got to do is you have to have an additional system like an under switch like this that will tune and pulse the ground continuously like I'm doing when I touch my hand to it. You see that pulse? And then again, because I kept tapping it. Now if we keep switching the ground here, we keep introducing these sudden disturbances which create very strong continuous displacement currents which give us those extra spikes. And obviously, I'm not stressing the load or anything. I'm completely isolated here. I'm sitting on a chair. But you, this would be even better if this was a real ground that you were pulsing individually. Now, at high voltage, I guess systems like the Capogen is a little simple because it spark gaps to ground, right? So uh, it facilitates this. But you can replicate this um, system with lower voltages as well you don't need a spark gap you just need another switch here but like i said let me repeat myself the ground is it's kind of weird because it's on the output of the positive but we're isolated it's not the same plus so essentially we're introducing two separate pluses it's a kind of splitting the positive if you want to look at it that way but it's not enough to just ground it and call it a day you need to continuously pulse that ground alongside and look, I'll keep touching it and simulating the pulse. And that big spike keeps going over and over without affecting the irregular inductive kickbacks. So that's a big bonus, big potential increase. And that would facilitate the charging and the dumping capacitor. I'm still working on this. I'm going to have an SCR dump. And I'm going to transcend it back to the... Um, front but just with these interactions it's not bad because when i unplug it look how long it keeps and i'm not even this is just true uh, um, inductive and capacitive coupling and it stays running for a few seconds pretty good so it is disconnected now and my switch is still going for a few seconds anyways so this is pretty good now it's going to kick out so um yeah, this is where I'm at. And again, the big revelation is we need to pulse our grounds as well, separately and isolated from the main trigger pulse. And that is probably one of the big keys. Still exploring this. So if other people want to try this with bedinis and stuff like that. But I've noticed with this special arrangement with the magnet, uh, with the interaction of a very strong pointing vector field, it seems to interact and enhance that, that spike. So we're going to stick with it since it seems to be working. Just giving everybody an update on things. And looking forward to your comments, folks.